One more aspect I want to look at with um, the approach in second shot game is we have to have a bit more self-knowledge here. Self-knowledge, your miss. We want to know you. The key to better golf is you. So you want to know your general miss. You can use this by using something like, I think there's a, an app called Playbook, something like that, Scorebook. And this will actually tell you where you're missing. Where? It'll give you a percentage. It'll give you a percentage. Now you need to understand where you're missing. And the question we want to ask ourselves with self-knowledge is why? Why do I miss right all the time? Am I hitting the ball too hard using too little loft, too hard of a swing? Could I use lower loft, a normal swing, and hit it straighter? Am I missing short? Am I under clubbing? Do I need to hit more club because I don't actually have my carry distance or total distance dialed in? Very rarely do you see people missing left and long. Generally, you're going to find people missing right and short. Often on golf courses, short is okay. If you're playing a low handicap and you're missing short, don't worry about that. But start to understand if you're missing more than 40 or 50% short, you're probably under clubbing. If you're missing 30, 40, 50% to the right, you're probably under clubbing, hitting too hard. Start to understand where you miss. You can also make your own notes or you can use an app like Playbook. I'm, I'm not quite sure, you'd have to look it up. But understand where you are missing. That way you can take corrective action. And you can even plan on the golf course knowing where you potentially miss if you don't want to change it and actually use it to your advantage for aiming or for bailout areas. Now you want to know your distance range, not the delusion range. The distance range, a pin is 140 yards away. You have the back of the green, which is 155, and you have the front of the green, which is 130. You want to know your distance range because potentially you don't have it very specific yet. As your handicap gets better, as you get more comfortable playing golf, you start to narrow your range down a little bit in terms of how far or how short one single club goes. Now, if you don't have a club for 140, but you have a club for 135 to 145, or you have a club 140 to 150, you can hit the distance range. You don't have to hit the exact specific distance to the pin because we can often with range finders get too caught up in that. As you get better, you can. As you get better, you can start hitting to a number with a certain club. But considering the lie, considering the weather, considering the elevation, considering the wind, you can always hit to a range. So between the pin and the back of the green, between the pin and the front of the green, you can hit a distance range. But you need to know your distance range because a lot of people are in delusion. So what they'll do is they'll say their distance for their whatever club, let's say seven iron, is 178. They've hit one seven iron, 178, back in the summer of 07 and that's been their number, and they stay short of the green every time they hit it from 178 by 18, 20 yards, because their actual distance 160 to 158. So know your distance range, not the delusion. The delusion and the ego gets in the way of hitting it correctly, hitting the correct club, hitting a club that gets the job done. The point of the approach game, this is very big, ego does not get the ball to the hole, the correct club, gets the ball to the hole. The correct club, whatever it is that works, that gets the ball to the correct position, is what you have to use. That's why I say don't ask your friends what they use, because now they tell you they're hitting from 140, they're hitting a pitching wedge. Are you gonna try to hit a pitching wedge? A lot of people do that. Hitting the ball too hard, missing it right, topping it, leaving it short. There's no need, there's no need. Using the correct tool that actually works for you in the moment is far more impressive to someone like me, let's say I'm playing with a two or three handicap, watching you get through the golf course using the tools you have, the shots you know how to hit, the shape you know how to hit. It's so beyond impressive. I'm blown away most of the time. I love seeing shit like that. I love it. I love talking in the clubhouse with a guy after just how great he played because he used his fade, because he used his eight iron from 120, because that's what is gonna work not trying to ask me what I hit so he can hit the same thing to see if he can keep up. I don't care, right? Like, I don't care. If you're hitting the same club as me, that's okay. If you're hitting less club than me, that's okay. If you're hitting five shots stronger loft than me, that's okay. I don't care. What's most impressive, the low handicap loves to see you use your tools. They love to see you do well, sink the putts, chip and putt, get up and down, manage the course. That is the most impressive thing in the world for low handicappers to watch. And having you as a partner in a better ball is one of the best things because it makes that guy confident that you're gonna keep your end up because you're not trying to keep up with anyone. You're trying to play your, your own game.
be yourself. The most respect, the best time you're gonna have is when you play your game. That's why I say self-knowledge. Believe me, no low handicap is talking shit about you if you're playing your game and they'll invite you back. Anyone will invite you back if you're playing your game and you're just chill and comfortable with it. I promise. Now, that little rant aside, you wanna understand your preferred fluff, okay? You've got a shot in, you, we, we're gonna fluff shots, okay, players? Some people are gonna fluff two, three, four, five around from the fairway, and then that's when we get in the negative death spiral and then teeth the next one across the green. You just have to understand that once you fluff the ball, you need to have a preferred shot in, and that's where you need to know your distance range on that preferred pitch in. So you've got a 150 yard shot, you fluff it 60 yards, now you've got 90. Do you have a 90 yard shot? Okay, it's 90 yards to the pin, but there's 20 yards of green before, there's 20 yards of green behind. Okay, now remember what I told you about the range. That's up to 110 and from 70. Do you have a club between 70 and 110 to land anywhere on this green? Yes, you do. So figure out your preferred fluff recovery shots, your preferred fluff recovery shots, and remember the notebook, take notes, keep notes of your preferred fluff. So when you do hit a bad one, don't get negative, don't get down, look at the pin, how much green in the front, how much green at the back, what fits into that range. Easy game, players, easy game. Avoid the negative death spiral. Self-talk in golf is one of the most important and yet most underrated and least spoken about thing in the game. And I'm here to tell you something very simple. Positive self-talk and negative self-talk, both work. What do I mean by both work? If you're doing something positive, you're focusing on the positive outcome. It will come true. If you're focusing on the negative outcome, it will come true. Your brain cannot tell the difference between do not and do. The word don't is completely skipped over by your brain. So if you're standing on the tee or you're standing on your approach shot and you're saying, oh, don't go in that left-hand bunker, your brain hears, go in that left-hand bunker. Oh, don't be short, don't be short. And your brain hears, be short. If you do want to use the negative, this is a little, little tippy tip. If you want to use the negative, use the negative in a way that benefits you. So if you get negative, okay, I just don't want to hit it on the left edge to take that slope to filter to the hole to the right. I don't want to do that. And then do it. Don't do, <laughs> don't do the real negative thing that you want to do, okay? If you say, don't go in the water short, you're going to go in the water short. You're going to fluff it. If you say, don't hit this to the back edge, okay? I, I don't want to reach the back edge. You know what you're going to do? You're going to reach the back edge. So if you want to talk positive, which is a bit more difficult, you want to focus on the proactive action. You want to focus on the visualization. You want to talk about what you're going to do. No, no form of danger, no negativity is coming in about what you want to do. No form of negativity in terms of noticing danger, noticing what you, what you want to avoid. None of that. You have to be fully into what you're going to do. If you do choose to use the negative, it cannot be about the thing you genuinely don't want to do. You should turn it into the thing you want to do with a don't on it. Don't do it. Don't make this putt. Don't hit it two inches outside the right. Don't let it just die in from the left hand side. Don't do it. Bam. You're going to make that putt. This one here, a little bit of a secret. I promise it works. Give it a try.